Mafia Profiles, Volume 1, Matteo Messina Dinaro. Matteo Messina Dinaro was born in Castelventrano in the province of Trapani, Sicily. His father, Francesco Messina Dinaro, known as Don Ciccio, was the capo madamento of Castelventrano. Young Matteo was surrounded by the Mafia throughout his childhood. His father set out to groom him from an early age to survive in the treacherous and often violent Italian underworld. By the age of 14, Matteo had already learned to use a gun. It seemed early on Matteo had a penchant for violence, as if being Don Ciccio's son meant he had something to prove. As a young man, Matteo once bragged, I filled a cemetery all by myself. He made a reputation by murdering rival boss Vincenzo Milazzo from Alcamo and strangling Milazzo's three-month pregnant girlfriend. His father started as a campier, or armed guard, for the Diali family. Wealthy landowners who were among the founders of the Banco Sicula. Matteo's father would then become fattore, or overseer of the estate, of all Diali land holdings. They later would hand over a significant estate in the area of Zangara to Matteo Massina Dinero himself. Matteo Messina Dinaro first became both headline news and a fugitive from the law when he assassinated anti-mafia prosecutor Giovanni Falcon. On May 23, 1992, Falcon was assassinated by Dinaro using a massive remote detonated bomb as he traveled with his wife, Francesca Morvillo, and three police escorts on the Palermo Airport Highway. Dinaro's reign of terror continued when just months later he orchestrated the car bombing that took the life of magistrate Paolo Borsellino. It was July 19, 1992 when Borsellino was killed in a car bomb outside his mother's home that also took the lives of five policemen. After the bombings in Palermo, the Italian government fought back. On January 15, 1993, they arrested top mafia boss Salvatore Rina while also implementing tough new prison codes designed to target and weaken the mafia. In response to this, the Sicilian mafia embarked on a terrorist campaign in which Messina Dinaro played a prominent role. The remaining mafia bosses, among them Messina Dinaro, Giovanni Brusca, Leo Luca Bagarella, Giuseppe Gravano, and Gio Acino La Barbera met several times. That resulted in a series of bomb attacks in the Via de Giorgio Fila in Florence, in Via Palestro in Milan, in the Piazza San Giovanni in Laterano, and Via San Terodoro in Rome, which left 10 people dead and 93 injured, as well as damage to centers of cultural heritage such as the Uvizi Gallery. Messina Dinaro also tailed the TV journalist Maurizio Costanzo, host of the Maurizio Costanzo Show, who just escaped a car bomb attack on the 14th of May, 1993. After the bombings in 1993, Messina Dinaro went into hiding. According to investigators, between 1994 and 1996, Messina Dinaro spent time in his hiding place located between Aspra and Bacaria with his lover Maria Messi, with whom he went on vacation to Greece under the false name Matteo Cracolisi. After the natural death of his father in November of 1998, Matteo became capo manamento of the area including Castelventrano and the neighboring cities, while Vincenzo Verga ruled in the city of Trapani and its surroundings. After the arrest of Verga in 2001, Messina Dinaro took over leadership of the Mafia in the province of Trapani. He is said to command some 900 men and apparently reorganized the 20 Mafia families in Trapani into one single mandamento, separate from the rest of the Sicilian Mafia. The Trapani Mafia is considered the Zoccolo Duro, or solid pedestal, of the Mafia in Sicily, and the most powerful, except for the families in Palermo. According to reports, in that same year, 
Messina Donato was one of the young Turks who wanted to set aside Bernardo Provenzano as the head of the Sicilian Mafia. In addition to Messina Donato, these young Turks were Giovanni Brusca, Domenico Racuglia, and Vito Vitali. The younger bosses wanted to take strategic decisions without prior consent of Provenzano. Reportedly, they told him, go home and take care of your family. This transition, however, did not occur until years later. Meanwhile, Messina Donato's life was not that of a typical Sicilian Mafia boss. Messina Donato's private life was much different than that of his predecessors. He was a womanizer, portrayed as a playboy in the press, driving expensive cars, and enjoying comics and video games in his leisure time. This flew in the face of the image of the conservative, family-oriented mafia boss at the time. He even earned the nickname Diabolique from the press after a comic book character. This didn't stop Messina Donato from pursuing his love interest, Maria Messi. In 2000, Maria Messi was arrested and because police found love letters that she had exchanged with Messina Donato, the following year she was sentenced to three years in prison for aiding and abetting. Then, on April 11, 2006, Bernardo Provenzano was arrested. After the arrest of Provenzano, Messina Donato was often mentioned as successor to the head of the Sicilian Mafia. His main rivals for the position were said to be Salvatore Lo Piccolo, boss of the Maramento of San Lorenzo Palermo, and Domenico Racuglia from Alto Fonte. While there is some discussion over who was actually the head of the Mafia at that time, many feel things were run more as a confederation and less authoritarian than was the case during the reign of Salvatore Rina. Meanwhile, Messina Donato continued to evade authorities using false papers and fake identities. In November 2007, Salvatore Lo Piccolo was arrested. Arrests of Giuseppe Grigoli in 2008 and Domenico Racuglia in 2009 both tightened the net around Donato while simultaneously making him one of the most powerful and sought-after bosses in Italy. In January 2010, police seized construction companies, villas, shops, and vehicles worth 550 million euros from a western Sicilian construction magnate, Rosario Casillo, believed to be one of the main bankrollers and money launderers for Messina Denaro. In September 2010, police seized a record amount of assets worth 1.5 billion euros from Sicilian businessman Vito Nicastri, accused of working with Messina Denaro. He had invested in wind and solar energy sources as a way of laundering money. It was during this time that Messina Denaro became the number one fugitive in Italy. The government's strategy of seizing assets and arresting enablers seemed to be working. The circle is closing around the number one fugitive, said Interior Minister Roberto Maroni. Palermo Chief Prosecutor Francesco Messino added that the strategy against Messino Denaro was to dry up the water that he swims in. On March 15, 2010, Messina Denaro's brother, Salvatore Messina Denaro, was arrested along with 18 others in Operation Golem II. They were part of the network surrounding the Mafia boss and were charged with organizing Messina Denaro's secret correspondence in order to help him remain hidden. Other charges included Mafia Association, Corruption, and Protection Rackets. On May 19, 2011, an attempt to arrest Messina Denaro failed. Police surrounded a manor farm 10 minutes from his hometown, Castel Ventrano. The tip, by the Italian Secret Service, which had provided useful information in the past, proved to be false, as there was no trace of Messina Denaro. In 2012, though still at large, Messina Denaro was one of five people sentenced to life imprisonment for their roles in the murder of Giuseppe De Matteo. Giuseppe De Matteo was the 12-year-old son of Sicilian mafioso Santino Matteo. Giuseppe was kidnapped because his father became a police informant and gave information on the Falcone bombing. After over a year of mistreatment, the boy was strangled and his body was dissolved in a vat of acid. Giovanni Brusca 
and Leo Luca Bagarella were also convicted. On December 13, 2013, Messina Denaro's sister, Patrizia Messina Denaro, was arrested with several other mafia associates in a serious blow to Messina Denaro by Italian police. On 17th of April 2018, she was sentenced to 14 years in prison for mafia association, external competition, and attempted extortion. In December of 2017, with Messina Denaro seemingly untouchable, over 200 Italian police officers executed search warrants at properties owned by around 30 Italian mafiosi in and near Castel Ventrano, his hometown, in search of Messina Denaro. Messina Denaro, however, remained ever elusive. On October 20th, 2020, despite not being able to find Denaro, the Italian government sentenced him in absentia to life in prison for having been one of the instigators of the Capisi bombing and the Via Diamello bombing. Finally, on January 16th, 2023, after years on the run, Matteo Messina Denaro was arrested in Sicily by Italian police after being a fugitive since 1993. At the time of his arrest, Matteo Messina Denaro was public enemy number one in Italy and the de facto head of the Sicilian Mafia. His arrest comes almost exactly 30 years after that of Salvatore Reina, the former head of the Sicilian Mafia, who was taken into custody in Palermo on January 15, 1993. Over 100 members of the armed forces were involved in the arrest of Messina Denaro, who was detained in Palermo at a private clinic while he was receiving treatment for cancer. The Italian media reported that Messina Denaro was captured just before 10 a.m. and taken to a secret location by the National Police. At the time of his arrest, Messina Denaro's assets were estimated to be at least 4 billion euros. Using Italy's strict anti-mafia laws, Messina Denaro was transferred during the night on a secret military flight to the prison La Aquila. The prison has an oncology ward and is the nearest place to Rome, where he will be put under interrogation by Italian magistrates. Only time will tell how the final chapter of this powerful mafioso's life will be written. To be continued.